<clears throat> Welcome to Insomnia Awaken. Right? Right? Yes? Yes. Uh, I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. Possi possibly interesting game. Uh, it says it's a short narrative horror game. Symbolically, the production depicts the struggle of a man with depression and his eternal internal demons. Nothing you see is exactly what it really is. This is not a ghost story or other fantasy monster story, because the real monsters are people themselves, often against themselves. Can you understand what surrounds you? The game was created in one week. Uh, apparently there's an anthology of fear on Steam for more experience? I... don't know. Sure, I don't know. Anyways. So yeah, no monsters, but it's just about depression. So we'll see if it's laughable, uh, relatable, or good or not. I remember this place. It never changes. It's a little vibrating. I guess I'd get a little depressed if my entire room shook ever so slightly. For a long time I have been trying to change anything, make something else happen, but it never changes. I got a decent place. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't agree with the TV being this far away, I mean, imagine this, you're sitting on a couch, over time it only becomes more overwhelming, sitting on a couch and watching a TV from that far away, ugh, I feel like I've been here before. I know every corner of this room, I spent so much time here, that I might live here as well. However, I've never been here before. So it's not your home, it's someone else's? I don't know how to comprehend this, but sure. Um, but the TV is too far away, I'd have the TV like right here. It's hard for me to describe exactly how it feels. Like, it, is it your home or not? When I was nine, I was often convinced that someone had changed my surroundings for an identical copy. Every piece of furniture, every object, all the people I knew were replaced with their perfect copies. They looked the same, but were not the same as I knew. Or that's being, that, I remember that's a condition of sorts, where you think everyone's not themselves anymore. That's not depression, that's a different kind of mental illness. Now I know that it was all just an illusion. We don't live in a computer simulation, so why would anyone bother to do this to me? Often our own mind leads us into such traps. It suggests that it seems different to us than it really is. The solution, in my opinion, is just not giving a fuck. I don't know. It depends, I guess, on how people think and their perception. I, I think the way I perceive things is perfectly fine, but can you persuade someone to think similarly? Uh, like with social counseling and be like sort of like cognitive therapy and it's just like it's all about perspective every perspective has a reality but if you're stuck in a reality that just happens to be fucking shit then the only way you can really cure yourself is getting a different perspective and allowing that perspective to persuade you and just sort of become your new main perception rather than the one you have, which is broken. Like, let's th can think of it as like a perception is like a hard drive, and it's just heavily fragmented, and it's like, you can keep defragging, but if, it, if it's just busted, then you just gotta get a different hard drive th sort of thing, you know? Especially if you're, it's like, is that, you have to imagine, um, just because you think you have a, a mental illness, or you do have a mental illness, doesn't mean that the social apparatus of your brain, like neurology, your neurons, everything, it can change by uh, what they call epigenetics, where people are saying that, genetically speaking, you are not genetically bound to whatever potential condition, or syndrome, or Ill illness you may have. With social cues, you can somewhat rewire your brain to be different. It will take a long time, 
and it depends per person, it depends on your connections, it depends on who's helping you, but it is possible. And it all starts, in my opinion, anecdotally speaking, with a different perception and the openness and willingness to accept a new perception. So if your perception of the world, of people, of yourself is shit, truly the first step to changing that shitty world, like this is, like this world here, it's not the world, this, everything that's a visual stimuli is merely a, a perception, a projection of perception, but every perception is a reality, just not all realities are fair, and not all perceptions are fair, and not all perceptions have to be real, because a perception can be just like, say, a floating bubble. If you don't like that perception, just pop it, move to the next one, and then that other new perception will become your new reality. But then realities never change, because all realities are every perception, if you get what I mean. Every perception is every reality. It's just, it's like, say, looking at the color red. Like if you say, here's, a, this is the color red. You have a paper, piece of paper that's the color red. You're like, yeah, that's red. Another person says, yeah, that's red. And a common thing would be, well, do you see the same type of red or is it different? How can you explain what kind of red you visually see sort of thing? It's sort of like that in a way. I don't know. So we got a key. Oh, and the key, then the key came here. So like when it comes to depression or mental illnesses or things like that, usually for me it's just I picture a perception and reality in which it just doesn't matter. This place, however, gives me such anxiety because I have long known that it is something completely different from what I would like it to be and paint it. I don't know. Paint it, put shit up, make it so it's not gray and bland. It'd be kind of strange, like, if it's like your room was this bland, but that's, of course, perception speaking rather than reality. And reality could be yellow, we just don't know. But if you painted it orange or painted it red, and you painted it every week, I can't imagine it staying bland by perception or by flawed perception reality. But you had to change your perception, more or less, no matter what. But I don't know. That's more or less how I make it so nothing really phases me. But at the same time... Almost interesting. Uh, well, I can't remember where I was going with that. If you make it so no perception truly matters, I don't know, I'm sure there will be some people who'd be like, well, if no perception truly matters as a core, which is sort of the... not true. Since, I don't know, I, I usually live based on the that kind of perception and reality. Every perception is real, as well as role theory sort of things. Did I pick up one of these keys? I don't even know, man. You have to choose a role and just be happy with it. Make the best out of it. So, I don't know. If you think being depressed is not a role you like, then stop. It, it's, it sounds more difficult than... It, I don't know, a lot of people would be like, I'm depressed, and telling me just stop being depressed doesn't work. But, honestly, in reality, it actually does. But the trick is not just perception and reality, and it picturing, like, say, every perception being a floaty little bubble, and that every bubble is a reality or is a world, is you also have to have confidence in that change of a bubble. I can't pick that up. Willingness, determination, confidence, uh, the willingness especially to change, the willingness to change perception makes it so you can change reality to be whatever you want, really. You don't have to be high to think like that. Oh, I hate ringing noises. That piercing sound, that's not piercing silence, that's piercing ringing. It seems to deafen me over time. I try to make some noise myself, but I can't. When hearing does not receive any stimuli on which to focus, it eventually goes crazy. The silence seems to be a loud roar of squeaking voices sitting in my head. By the time... Hmm.
It seems he's mostly much worse. However, is the awareness that I am not alone here. So you're schizophrenic too? I wish to be alone. Seems more like that's a, a defense mechanism rather than a true wish. And here I am like psychoanalyzing this character. However, I have never been alone. Seems like he's starving for stimuli rather, in my opinion. Like he wants change, he wants something different, but this is too sameish and he's been here for too long. I'd almost picture it that he's like an extrovert who's almost forced themselves to live like an introvert and they're just craving for some form of different stimuli and attention and he needs that from other people but other people probably suck and it's led him to be recluse but it's just not compatible with his kind of personality but in that kind of situation uh, one step at a time you just gotta change things with what do you want to do and then you know, no. time seems to stand still every second of waiting seems and I can't stop it I don't want to shoot anything unless I have to wait for a monster or something else I don't know what kind of advice like when it comes to games that are that delve in depression I like to try to give some kind of Nico circle words of wisdom, but without trying to repeat myself, but it depends on how many people have viewed the previous videos of whenever I'd rant about depression or perception and realities and epigenetics and things like that. I don't know. I lock myself in the bathroom and I stare at the water in the bathtub. I would like to be someone else. I'm like, that's, that's perfect. Like I said about perception, I would not be able to see myself looking at my own reflection. If you want to be someone else, all it literally takes is a different perception. It gives too much, it gives me too much awareness of everything I have to go through every day that passes for years. The only difference would be whole life. If you are very miserable, say, with the body you're living in, I have to wait. Maybe it will be better. Yes, waiting is one of the things you also have to unfortunately do. Even as unbearable as it might be, it won't be better. And then the cynicism and pessimism kicks in, huh? I'll just wait and not click the mouse. What can I ramble about, though, as I wait? Hmm. Because I want to see if, like, not doing anything makes it so there's a happy ending, maybe? Um, the only time there's a issue is, like, if everything's mental, then it depends on what kind of self-hatred you have. Like, do you have a hatred of how you think? How you see things? How you hear things? Your self-image? If it's self-image by... Uh, say physical like hatred of your physical self you can't really change that I mean like it's like, you know cosmetic surgeries or things like that those are for last ditch efforts but you never know if it's like that those kind of things will make it so you'll be like a Michael Jackson where you're like oh I hate how I look I hate how I look and then you just it just becomes sabotaging your body it becomes an illness of trying to perfect yourself when it's just not necessary. I don't know, it's hard to say if it's a physical uh, hatred of imperfections. Because it could just be, you know, blown out of proportions. But if it's all mental illness or mental games, eh, changing your, it's all about perception and confidence, but hey. This guy shot the door instead. Well, it's good that he couldn't do it, I guess. Nothing has changed, and I'm still surprised. Are you sure you're surprised? I fell into a routine of despair. And then you gotta break that routine. Every time I give up all my hopes for change, because I know that it will be no different. 
so why this shock? Everything can't be the same. I mean, like, what if you had a bucket list where you wanted to start hiking or hiking up mountains? So then most of your day is hiking fucking mountains rather than being here. Could you really say there would be no change? Yeah, no. There, there would be definite change. But every time anyone does change, usually it's like one step at a time and it's so slow paced or too minimal that you don't really feel it. It's got to be hard and fast and uncomfortable. Uh, I don't know. We kick the door? Sure. I've tried many times to do it differently. I listen to the advice of friends. D uh, advice of a specialist. But it is always the same. And what is it they say then? You say it's always the same. If they didn't help, I can't change it myself. What? It is obvious. I don't think it's obvious, or else you would have been, like, fixed, so to speak. So obviously it's not obvious. It's like, I'm, I'm in a pickle. I, I don't know what's going on, but apparently it's obvious to him. It's quite the opposite. It's oblivious. If it was so obvious, then you just do the fucking thing that would fucking help you the most. It's not like your body wants you to become some kind of shit bag of tormented despair and depression. Gonna ram it. Don't know what it's gonna do. Unless it's supposed to be symbolic for getting out of this room. And this room is, you know, like sort of thinking outside of the box and getting out of it. Maybe. No. Oh. Womp womp. Well, it really depends on. Oh yeah, here here's change. We went from a revolver to a shotgun. Well, that's change. How, how am I getting these guns? So. I don't know if that's the right thing to do. <laughs> it does feel good. How many of these demons am I killing? What are they meant to represent? Usually the typical is, you know, past selves or something like that, symbolically, but who knows. Face my biggest nightmare face to face. And I have to. What is that supposed to be? I s staring into its eyes, I feel tremendous anxiety and disgust. It would I would like to kill it, but it can't be done that way. It's not so simple. My worst pain is having to look at my own nightmare. Reminds me, I, I had an actual nightmare last night when I was sleeping, or napping, or power napping. It was pretty funny. It was an interesting game that was just like sort of action and shooter kind of a dream, but then it turned into a nightmare attempt, but I was able to prevail, it was kind of funny. I'll, I'll talk about it maybe afterwards. Hey, collar. That's good. 
Maybe we should have a hamburger. That might help. A nice juicy Wendy's burger. Some things seem different to us than they really are. It's like I said about perception. Perception is everything. Insomnia awaken. Perception quite, quite literally is everything. Ugh. My perception. I'm a strong circle, obviously. And being Czech anthology of fame. Mm. Being a strong, strong circle. You know, strong circle alpha male. Oh, how, how can you bring me down? I, I don't know. The worst case or the worst device I have is just sometimes I'm fucking really temperamental. I don't know. Something I still have to work on, obviously. Sometimes I can get really fucking annoyed pretty quickly. It depends on... Because I have a lot of pet peeves. And if I have a pet peeve, I let it be known. I'm like, hey, don't go there. Just don't go there. Um... But yeah, no, interesting dream related. It's like... It's like a... Sort of like a cold fear or afraid of monsters kind of dream. And... I don't know, I was just shooting all like these zombie things in a house. And suddenly... I actually, I don't know if it was like shooting zombies, it was shooting something. And I was just searching the building for items and stuff. And then I heard like this sort of like boss music start setting in. And I was like, why do I hear boss music? And I turn around and this somehow just creepy zombie looking thing that was like this brown, it was almost like um, the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Those brown zombie things. Let me double check to see what they're called. I guess they're called Redead. I fucking hated Redead. Ocar in Ocarina of Time, scary as shit, man. God damn. Ugh. Disgusting. But yeah, it was like sort of a Redead showed up in my dream and walked at a really fast pace towards me. Like, a lot of most of the enemies that were in my dream before it were just, you know, zombie-ish or slow-moving, easy to kill. But this thing was like... <laughs> I was like, ugh. What I did was, like, it felt like I could stop it based on VR inspirations of, like, playing Boneworks, where I just, like, put a long object to sort of block its pathway and hold it back. I was like, ugh, like, get away from me. Like, ah, while pushing it, like, back with arms and length. I was just, ugh, no, just, ugh, keep away, ugh, gross, stop. And I was eventually able to stop it. But I could tell my dream was trying to sort of make it turn to shit sort of thing. Like, my dream was trying to turn it into a nightmare of me going like Ab abort and nope and hit the abort button and exit my dream but I was just like no not this time just ugh yeah that's kind of funny how sometimes my dreams try to hijack it abruptly and turn it into a nightmare or vice versa and it's always about a battle of wills sometimes when it comes to lucid dreaming where you have a dream and sometimes your brain is like hey what if we spiced this dream up and turned it into a nightmare and then me consciously while sleeping will be like, no, I don't want that. It's interesting, but no, it's 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 kind of like adrenaline pumping in the dream. But either way, I don't know. What do you have to say about this game? Or if you have anything you'd like to rant about or ventilate about, leave in the comments below. Uh, or if you agree or disagree or anything about my rambling or rants or any number of my rants. If you enjoyed this video, the game, or my rants, hey, please leave a like, comment, hit that subscribe button, beacon buff off subscriber, and the notification down below for updates of my videos. Thank you for watching. Until the next time. <laughs>